Hey Sloby Nation, welcome back to another DIY Wednesday and I know it's been a minute since I've uploaded a video and I wish I had a good excuse but I terribly don't. If you guys haven't followed me on Facebook, be sure to follow me on Facebook because I do a lot of my updates there. Also trying to be better with uploading on Instagram. I'm doing my 365 days of happiness where I post a photo every single day to remind myself what makes me happy or to pick something that makes me happy. Today is about my living room and how I want to continue to decorate the space for under $2,000 because Black Friday is coming y'all and I want to buy myself a bomb TV. So today we are going to be reupholstering some chairs. Now the guys who lived at my home before I moved in actually left these chairs behind and I was going to get rid of them but then I thought you know what I'm just going to reupholster them because they are still pretty nice chairs. Originally they are made of vinyl and don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with the chairs it's just it looks very bachelor for my taste and uh, it didn't really go with anything that I had in my living room or just in my house in general and so I am going to show you guys how how I reupholstered these chairs. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and let's get started on this cool, awesome DIY that cost me about $10. Okay, so we're gonna start out with a chair that you don't necessarily like, and this is my chair. Now you will also need an X-Acto knife or a box cutter, and this is the one that I'm using from my toolkit. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just going to open up the seam from the backing of the chair away from the actual back of the chair. Next at the bottom of the chair, I'm going to pull out the staples that is stapling this lining to cover up the bottom of the chair. So keep in mind that when you're taking your chair apart, everything that you do is going to be done backwards again when you're reassembling your chair. So at this point, it'll be good to take pictures of everything, even to take notes of things that you've done. This way you can repeat the steps all over again. Now it's time to remove the legs from the chair. I'm just going to use my power drill to remove the screws and it depends on the construction of your chair, but they're mostly pretty similar. Okay, now I am going to remove the legs from the chair and then I am peeling the old reupholster from the cushion. Going back to the backing of the chair, I am also going to remove the reupholstering from the backing as well. Okay, now you're gonna end up with two pieces. You're going to get the front part of the back of the chair and then the back part of the back of the chair, if that makes sense. Okay, so basically you're going to take the back piece and you're going to lay it on a piece of fabric and cut out a piece that's exactly the same size, seeing the allowance and everything already added into there. Now take the front piece and do the exact same thing. You're going to mark out all the curves or darts that needs to be sewn for the front piece. And I'm not going to walk you guys through this step by step because each chair might be built differently. Some of them might have a dart in the front and some of them might not. So definitely take a look at the anatomy of your chair and just follow whatever you see that is already on the original reupholstery. So I took the front piece and the back piece. I face them right sides together and I sew all the way around. Okay, so here is the back to the chair and now I'm just going to slip it onto the chair itself. Now it's going to be quite a tight fit and you kind of want it to be a little bit snug. Um, think of it as like your very snug pair of jeans where it makes your butt look totally awesome, but um, it's going to take a little bit of work to get into them, you know? Okay, now moving on to the seat, it is fairly easy to do this. Just take out a piece of fabric that covers up the whole thing. You don't actually have to do this, you can just fold the corners in, but for me personally, I like to sew in the corners because it gives it a prettier finish. So I am just sewing the two front corners of this seat cushion. Um, the back, I am actually going to take it to the back and just staple it down because you're not really gonna see the backing of it. So once you have it fitted on top of the cushion, go ahead and just pull and tug on the fabric and staple everything down onto the wooden frame. Phew, now it's time to put everything together. Go ahead and take this seat and put it against the backing of the chair. Now screw the seat back onto the chair and then go ahead and screw the legs back onto the seat. Okay, lastly, that piece of lining that I pulled out earlier, I decided to save and reuse because I didn't want to go and buy another piece of lining. So I'm just gonna staple that back up. Now, yay, check out my chairs. I also painted the legs because I wanted to go the extra mile with my chairs and I finished both of them. Also tried to keep the tapestry fabric costs quite low because sometimes that can rip you a new one if you are not careful when you're buying things by the yard. And yeah, so both chairs cost me only 10 bucks. Not too shabby, right? 
What do you guys think of the DIY? I know it can be a little bit complicated, but trust me, once you dissect your chair, it actually is quite easy to reupholster a chair. Now, this is gonna be going into my kitchen. Um, they also left a little table for me, which I'm going to paint and probably put like a nice little vase there or something. It will be like a, a coffee breakfast thing. Because it was free, it was left behind, I thought, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this into a project because why not? Free stuff is awesome. And the free stuff that you DIY'd yourself is tray tray awesome. That's it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this DIY. If you are going to try this out, be sure to use my old hashtag S L O A B N. Shoot it to any one of my socials: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Because I love to see you guys taking my DIYs and running with it. It inspires me to create more videos. Um, for now, if you like this video, be sure to like it down below, share it with everyone that you know, and of course, hit that subscribe button because every subscriber equates to one fairy dust. I eat the fairy dust, and that's what motivates me to create more videos for you guys. Yeah, I think that's it. I said a mouthful today, so you guys know how to end my videos. Remember to always rock on slow bees. Bye! Hey slow bees, welcome back to another DIY. Today is DIY Wednesday. If you guys haven't checked out my last DIY, which I uploaded last week, I made three three different types of pumpkin spiced items, which I'm so excited about because I will be making the cheesecake trifle for a party that I'm going to this weekend. So hopefully it will turn out fantastical. But today I am going to share with you guys how I built this really cute end table. It cost me less than $12, I think, maybe even less than that. Um, if you guys may know, I am obviously trying to decorate my living space and I'm trying to do it for a under $2,000 because I want to buy myself a sick TV. I have to make sure that I don't spend too much on furniture. I am gonna show you guys how to make this really cute end table and my mom thought it was really, really adorable and it's so easy. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and grab all of our stuff and Okay, so for this project, you will need a crate. I got mine from Walmart. You can find them at Michael's or at a barn or anywhere else really. Okay, first and foremost, you are going to paint your crate. Now, if your crate is a little bit rough, you can sand it down to smooth everything out. But if it's not, you can just paint right on top of it. I'm using the Waverly brand of paint and it's in their chalk line and the color is ivory. This by far has got to be my most favorite craft paint that is out there. If you guys have a Walmart and they have this available, be sure to definitely check it out. Okay, next for the legs, I found these cute little legs from Home Depot and they were like $1.50 each. How awesome! Okay, so at the bottom, you are going to mark out all the holes where you're going to attach the legs. Now using a power drill, you're going to make holes on all of the markings. I highly suggest working with a smaller drill bit first. And then switching to a drill bit that is the same size as the 